Ready Player One, Chapter Three. So, the system verified that I was in the chat room's access list and allowed me to enter. My view of the classroom shrank from the limits of my peripheral vision to a small thumbnail window in the lower right of my display, allowing me to monitor what was in front of my avatar. The rest of my field of vision was now filled with the interior of H's chat room. My avatar appeared just inside the entrance, the door to the a door to the top of the car carpeted stair staircase. Oh my gosh. The door didn't lead anywhere. It didn't even open. This was because the basement and its all the contents didn't exist as part of the Oasis. Chat rooms were standalone simulations, temporary virtual spaces that avatars could access from anywhere in the Oasis. My avatar wasn't actually in the chat room. It only appeared that way. Wade 3 slash Parzival was still sitting in my world history classroom with his eyes closed. Logging into a chat room was a little like being in two places at once. H had named this chat room the basement. He'd programmed it to look like a large suburban rec room, circa the 1980s. Old movie and comic book posters covered the wood-paneled walls. Vintage RCA television stood in the center of the room, hooked up to a Betamax VCR, a laser disc player, and several vintage video game consoles. Bookshelves lined the far wall, filled with role-playing game supplements and back issues of Dragon Magazine. Hosting a chat room, this large wasn't cheap, but H could afford it. He made quite a bit of dough competing in a televised PvP arena games after school and on the weekends. H was one of the highest ranked combatants in the Oasis, both in the deathmatch and capture the flag leagues. He was even more famous than Artemis. Over the past few years, the basement had become a highly exclusive hangout for elite gamers. H granted access only to people he deemed worthy, so being invited to hang out in the basement was the big honor, especially for a third-level nobody like me. As I descended the staircase, I saw a few dozen other gunters milling around. With avatars that varied in wildly in appearance, they were humans and cyborgs and demons and dark elves and Vulcans and vampires. Most of them were gathered around a row of old arcade games against the wall. A few... Others stood by ancient stereo, currently blasting the Wild Boys by Duran Duran. Browsing a month through H's giant rack of vintage cassette tapes, H himself was sprawled on one of the chat room's three couches, which were arrayed in a used tape in front of the TV. H's avatar was a tall, broad-shouldered Caucasian man with dark hair and brown eyes. I asked him once if he looked anything like his avatar in real life, and he jokingly replied, yes, but in real life, I'm even more handsome. As I walked over, he glanced up from the in Intellivision game that he was playing. His distinctive Cheshire grin stretched from ear to ear. Z, he shouted. What's up, amigo? He stretched out his right hand and gave me five as I dropped down to the couch opposite him. H had started calling me Z shortly after I met him. He liked to give people single letter names. H pronounced his own avatar's name just like the letter H. What's up, Humperdink? I said, and this was a game we played. I always called him by some random H name, like Harry or Herbert or Henry or Hogan. I was making guesses at his real first name, which he'd once confided in me, began with the letter H. I'd known H for a little over three years. He was also a student on Lewis, a senior at OPS 1172, which was the opposite side of the planet from my school. We'd met one weekend at a public Gunter chat room and hit it off immediately because we shared some of the same interests, which is to say one interest a total all-consuming obsession with Halliday and his Easter egg. A few minutes into the first conversation, I knew H was the real deal, an elite gunter with some serious mental kung fu. He had his 80s trivia all down cold, not just the canon stuff either. He was a true Halliday scholar. and He apparently seen, this, seen the same qualities in me because he'd given me his contact card and invited me to hang out in the basement whenever I liked. He'd been one of my closest friends ever since. Over the years, a friendly rivalry had gradually developed between us. We did a lot of trash talking about which one of us would get his name up on the scoreboard first. We were constantly trying to seek out to out-geek each other with our knowledge of obscure gunter trivia. Sometimes we even conducted our research together. This usually consisted of watching cheesy 80s movies and TV shows here in the chat room. We also played a lot of video games, of course. Each and I had wasted countless hours on two-player classics like Contra, Golden Axe, Heavy Barrel, Smash TV, the Ikira Warrior. Aside from yours truly, H was the best all-around gamer I'd encountered. We were evenly matched at most games, but he would trounce me at certain titles, especially everything in the first-person shooter genre. That was his area of expertise, after all. I didn't know anything about who H was in real world, but I got the sense his home life wasn't that great. Like me, he seemed to spend every waking moment logged into the Oasis, and even though he'd never actually met in person, he told me more than once that I was his best friend, so I assumed it was isolated and lonely as I was. 
So what did I do after you bailed last night? He asked, tossing me another Intellivision controller. We hung out here in his chat room for a few hours the previous evening, watching old Japanese monster movies. Nada, I said. Went home and brushed up on a few classic coin ops. Unnecessary. Yeah, but I was in the mood. I didn't ask him what he had done the night before, and he didn't volunteer any details. But he'd probably gone to Gygax or something equally awesome to speed run through a few quests and rack up some XPs. He just didn't want to rub it in. Each could afford to spend a fair amount of time off-world, following up leads and searching for the copper key. But he never lorded this over me or ridiculed me for not having enough dough to teleport anywhere. And he never insulted me for going to loan, insulted me by offering to loan me a few credits. It was an unspoken rule among Gunters. If you were a solo, you didn't want or need help from anyone. Gunters who wanted help joined a clan, and H and I both agreed that clans were for suck posers. And we both vowed to remain solos for life. We constantly had discussions about the egg, but these conversations were always guarded and we were careful to avoid talking about specifics. After I beat H in three rounds of Tron, Deadly Discs, he threw down his Intellivision controller in disgust and grabbed a magazine off the floor. It was an old issue of Starlog. I recognized the Ruder Hog on the cover in a Lady Hawk promotional photo. Starlog, eh? I said, nodding my approval. Yeah, downloaded every single issue from the Hatcheries archive, still working my way through them. I was just reading this great, great piece on Ewoks, The Battle for Endor. Made for TV, released in 1985. I recited Star Wars trivia as one of my specialties. Total garbage, a real low point in the history of Star Wars. Says you, it has some great moments. No, I said, shaking my head, it doesn't. It's even worse than the first Ewok flip. Caravan of Courage. They should have called it Caravan of Suck. H rolled his eyes and went back to reading. He wasn't going to take the bait. I eyed the magazine's cover. Hey, can I look at that when you're done? Why? So you can read the article on Lady Hawk? Maybe. Man, you just love that crap burger, don't you? Blow me, H. How many times have you seen that sap fest? Oh, you know you make me sit through it at least twice. He was baiting me now. He knew Lady Hawk was one of my guilty pleasures and that I'd seen it over two dozen times. I was going... To do, I was doing you a favor by making you watch it, noob, I said, and shoved a new cartridge into the television console and started up a single-player game of Astro Smash. You'll thank me one day. Wait and see. Lady Hawk is canon. Canon was the term we used to classify any movie, book, game, song, or TV show, which Halliday was known to have been a fan. Surely you must be joking. H said, no, I'm not joking, and don't call me Shirley. He lowered the magazine and leaned forward. There's no way Halliday was a fan of Lady Hawk. I guarantee it. Where's your proof? I asked. The man had taste. That's all the proof I need. The plea, then please explain why he owned Lady Hawk on both VHS and Laserdisc. List all the films in Lady Hawk's collection and the time of his death was included appearance in, um, in the appendices of all, Anna, Anna Rack's Almanac. We both had the list memorized. The guy was a billionaire. He owned millions of movies, most of which he probably never even watched. He had the DVDs of Howard the Duck and Cruel, too. Doesn't mean he liked them. And that sure as heck doesn't make them canon. It's not really up for debate, Homer, I said. Lady Hawk is an 80s classic. It's lame, is what it is. The sword looks like they were made out of tinfoil, and that soundtrack is especially lame, full of synthesizers and stuff. But, the, but Alan Parsons Project, lame Orawa, beyond lame. Highlander 2, lame. Hey! I feigned hurling my Intellivision controller at him. Now you're just being insulting. Lady Hawk's cast alone makes the film canon. Roy Batty, Batty, Ferris Bueller, and the dude who played Professor Falcon in War Games. I searched my memory for the actor's name. Don Wood, reunited with Matthew Broderick. A real low point in their careers, he said laughing. He loved arguing about old movies even more than I did. The other Gunters in the chat room were now starting to form a small crowd around us to listen. Our arguments were often high entertainment value. You must be stoned, I shouted. Lady Hawk was directed by Richard Donner. The Goonies, Superman, the movie? You're saying that that guy sucks? I don't care if Spielberg directed it. It's a chick flick disguised as a sword and sorcery picture. The only genre of film with less balls is probably freaking legend. Anyone who actually enjoys Lady Hawks is a bona fide USGA choice 
laughter from the peanut gallery. I was actually getting a little angry now. A big fan of Legend, too, and H knew it. Oh, so now I'm... And you're the only one with an Ewok fetish? I snatched Starlog out of his hands and threw it against the Revenge of the Jedi poster on the wall. I suppose you think your extensive knowledge of Ewok culture is going to help you find the egg? Don't start on the Andorians again, man, he said, holding up an index finger. I've warned you. I will ban you, I swear. I knew this was a hollow threat, so I was about to push the Ewok thing even further and maybe give him some crap for referring to them as Andorians, but just then a new arrival materialized on the staircase, a total lamer by the name of Irock. I let out a groan, but I still can't figure out why H granted him access to the basement. Irock fancied himself an elite gunner, but he was nothing more than an obnoxious poser. Sure, he did a lot of teleporting around the Oasis and completing quests and leveling up his avatar, but he didn't actually know anything. And he was always brandishing an oversized plasma rifle the size of a snowmobile, even in the chat room, where it was totally pointless. The guy had no sense of decorum. Were you guys arguing about Star Wars again, he said, descending the steps and walking over to join the crowd. That is so played out. I turned to H. If you want to ban someone, why don't you start with this clown? I hit reset on the Intellivision and started another game. Shut your hole, Penisville, I rock replied using his favorite mispronunciation of my avatar's name. He doesn't ban me because he knows I'm elite. Ain't that right, H? No, H says, rolling his eyes. That ain't right. You're about as elite as my great-grandmother, and she's dead. Screw you, H, and your dead grandma. Gee, I rock, I muttered. You always manage to elevate the intelligence level of the conversation. The whole room just lights up the moment you arrive. Sorry to upset you, Captain No Credits, I rock says. You shouldn't have been on... Inceptio Pam handling for change right now. He reached for the second Intellivision controller, but I snatched it up and touched to H. He scowled at me. Crick. Poser. Poser? Penisville's calling me a poser. He turned to address the small crowd. This chump is so broke. He had to bum rides to Greyhawk just so he could kill cowboys for copper pieces, and he's calling me a poser. This elected a few snickers from the crowd, and I felt my face turn red under my visor. Once, about a year ago, I'd made the mistake of hitching a ride off world with Irox to try to gain a few experience points. After dropping me in a low-level quest area on Greyhawk, the jerk had followed me. I'd spent the next few hours slaying a small band of kobolds waiting for them to respawn and then slaying them again over and over. My avatar was still only first level at the time, and it was the only safe way for me to level up. Irox had taken several screenshots of my avatar that night and labeled them Petersville the Mighty Cobalt Slayer, and then he got posted them to the hatchery. He brought it up every chance he got. He was never going to let me live it down. That's right. I called you a poser, poser. I stood up and got into his grill. You're an ignorant, know-nothing twink. Just because you're 14th level doesn't mean you're a gunter. You actually have to possess some knowledge. Word, H said, nodding in his agreement. We bumped fists. More snickering from the crowd, now directed at Irock. Irock glared at the moment. Okay, let's see who the real poser is, he said. Check this out, girls. Grinning, he produced an item from his inventory and held it up. It was an old Atari 2600 game, still in the box. He purposely coveted the game's title with his hand, but I recognized the cover artwork anyway. It was a painting of a young man and woman in ancient green attire, both brandishing shorts. Lurking behind them was a minotaur and a bearded guy with an eye patch. Know what this is, hotshot? I rock said, challenging me. I'll even give you a clue. It's an Atari game, released as part of a contest. I contained several puzzles, and you saw, and if you solved them, you could win a prize. Sound familiar? Iowak was always trying to impress us with some clue or piece of holiday lore that foolishly believed had been first to uncover. Gunters love to play the game of one-upmanship, and were constantly trying to prove that they had acquired more obscure knowledge than anyone else, but Iowak totally sucked at it. You're joking, right? You just now discovered the Sword Quest series? Iowak deflated. You're holding Sword Quest, Earth World, I continued. The first game in the Sword Quest series released in 1982. I smiled wide. Can you name the next three games in the series? His eyes narrowed. He was, ink, of course, stumped. Like I said, he was a total poser. Anyone else? I said, opening the question up to the floor. The gunters in the crowd eyed each other, but no one spoke up. Fire world, water world, air world, H answered. Bingo, I said, and we bumped, bumped fists again. Although air world was never actually finished because Atari fell on hard times and canceled the contest before it was completed. I rock quickly put the game back in his inventory. You should join up with the suckers, I rock. H said, laughingly, they really could use someone with your vast knowledge, stores of knowledge. 
I rocked flipping the bird. If you two already know about the sword quest contest, how come I never once heard you mention it? Come on, I rock, H had said, shaking his head. <coughs> Excuse me. Shaking his head. Sword Quest Earthworld wasn't Atari's unofficial sequence in the adventure. Every gunter worth their salt knows that that contest. How much more obvious can you get? I rock tried to save some face. Okay, if you're both such experts, who programmed all of the Sword Quest games? And Hitchin sense. And Todd, Todd Fry, I recited. Try asking me something difficult. I've got one for you, H interjected. What were the prizes Achari gave out to the winner of each contest? Ah, uh, I said, good one, let me see. Hmm. The prize for Earth World Contest was a talisman of the penultimate truth. It was solid gold and in encrusted with diamonds. The kid who won it melted it down to pay for college, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, H said, quit stalling. What about the other two? I'm not stalling. Fire World Prize was the Chalice of Light, and the Water World Prize was supposed to be the Crown of Life, but it was never awarded due to the cancellation of the contest. Same goes for the Air World Prize. It was supposed to be the Philosopher's Stone. Each grinned and gave me a double high five and then said, and if the contest hadn't been canceled, the winners of the first four rounds were supposed to have competed towards a grand prize, the Sword of Ultimate Sorcery. I nodded. The prizes were all mentioned in the Sword Quest comic books and came across it came with the games. Comic books, which happened to be visible treasure in the room in the final scene of Anorax Imitation, by the way. The crowd burst into applause. I, Rock, lowered his head in shame. Since I'd become a gunter, it's been obvious to me that Holiday had drawn inspiration for his contest from the Sword Quest contest. I had no idea if he'd borrowed any of the puzzles from them, too, but I'd studied the game and their solutions thoroughly just to be safe. Fine, I, Rock says. You both obviously need to get a life. And you, I said, obviously need to find a new hobby because you clearly lack the intelligence and commitment to be a gunter. No doubt. Try to do some research for a change, I rock. I mean, uh, did you ever hear Wikipedia? It's free, douchebag. I rock turned and walked over to the long boxes of comics stacked on the other side of the room as if he'd lost interest in the discussion. Whatever, he said over his shoulder. I didn't spend as much time offline getting laid. I'd probably just know it just no, just as much worthless as stuff as you two do. H ignored him and turned his back to me. What were the names of the twins who appeared in Sword Quest comic books? Terra and Tor. Dang, Z, you're the man. Thanks, H. The message flashed on my display, informing me the three-minute warning bell had just rung in my classroom. I know H and I rock were seeing the same message because our scores operated on the same schedule. Time for another day of higher learning, H said, standing up. Drag, I rock said. See you losers later. He gave me the finger, and then his avatar disappeared as he logged out of the chat room. The other gunters began to log out and vanish, too. Only when H and I remained. Serious H? I said, why do you let that moron hang out in here? Because he's fun to beat at video games, and his ignorance gives me hope. How so? Because if most of the other gunters out there are as clueless as I rock, and they are, Z. Believe me, it means that you and I really do have a shot at winning this contest. I shrugged. I guess that's one way to look at it. Wanna hang out after school again tonight? Around seven or so? I got a few errands to run, but then I'm gonna tackle some of the stuff on my need to watch list. A space marathon, perhaps? Oh, heck yes, see, I said, count me in. We logged out simultaneously, just as the bell began to ring. My little drop down.